Um, I get the impression that Eliot's poor is not necessarily under your skin, but some of the things he says kind of confuses you more than annoys you. Would that be accurate? Yeah, I'm more confused about everything that he's saying about uh, me not wanting to fight him, me getting forced to fight him. I, I, the dude just, I mean, he got me, he got me out here feeling like how he looked after my, my Gaethje fight, so. It's crazy. Do you get the impression, right, he's clearly a confident guy, he clearly believes in his skills, but do you think when he's talking about, oh, I'm gonna fight for the lightweight title and the welterweight title and Max is gonna be easier than Josh Emmett, do you think he believes what he's saying or is he trying to sort of build himself up so he gets that confidence? Uh, I think, uh, I mean, I don't know, bro. His mind is very interesting. I, I, I couldn't answer that question for you, to be honest, bro. Um, but if that's what it takes to be the best the best version of himself come Saturday night, then so be it. You know, he can talk all that talking once, because <coughs> at the end of the day, he's still got to see me in three days. Out of all the things he said, is the whole, I'm going to point at the floor in the first 10 seconds thing, the one that kind of makes you roll your eyes the hardest? Yeah, because it just makes no sense, you know? At the end of the day, to me, I I, I don't think he deserves. You got you to gotta earn that right. I don't think he deserved that right. With him being... Uh, I mean, you know, you know the guy that he's copycatting. This guy's a copycat, you know, down to the tattoos, to his aura, to the way he's approaching fights. The guy's a copycat, and you, you're best friends with the guy he's following, so uh, trying to copy. So, at the end of the day, I think you got to earn that moment, and uh, I believe he had that. He could have earned it with Josh Emmett in in their five one roar. Josh Emmett was trying to swing. If you guys can go back to that fight and watch what happened. When Josh Emmett was trying to swing, someone shot and someone holds someone down for the rest of the fight. So I think the moment needs to be earned and he's just, he's just trying to steal stuff, you know? He's already trying to steal one person's aura and now he's trying to steal some, somebody else's thing. So it's just, it's amazing. He's clearly a good fighter, right? No one does that to Volkanovski if they're not a good fighter, but you, in your career, fought Aldo, you fought Conor, you fought Volkanovski, you fought the best of the best in this division's history. When you look at Ilya as a fighter, how does he rank up against those names or do you st still think he's kind of unproven? I mean, he's an animal, he's good, you know? A, a lot of people forget that when he came into the UFC, he got right in as a, as a grappler and wrestler. That's what he was. And he came in the UFC, started knocking dudes out. His boxing is nice. As a fighter, you cannot be a hater and say he's not good, you know? Is he proven? He did what he had to do when he had to do it to get to the position he has. So there's no disrespect to that. But you get to see me come Saturday night, so that should be fun. Just going back to what you were saying about how Ilya is a beast and comparing him to your past opponents, you know, he keeps using this phrase like, I bring the, uh, the next evolution of mixed martial arts. That's what he's saying about himself. When you actually break it down, do you see things that he's doing differently that people weren't doing years ago? Or is that just something you think he's saying to kind of build the fight? I mean, it's probably something to bring the fight, to build the fight, because uh, I don't think he's doing anything different uh, than, than, than people, you know? I mean, everybody strikes, everybody wrestles, everybody judos, Greco-Roman, whatever you want to call it, everybody does this. He's a mixed martial arts, you know? And he's putting it together uh, pretty well for himself, but I mean, like he's saying this new generation, I'm. I'm only a couple of years older than them, so, and I've been, I've been, I've been here, done that. Like I said, a lot of people keep forgetting how, how young I was, you know? Like I said, when I was, I think ESPN posted it. When I was his age, I had like all my title wins and title defenses already, so that's just how that goes. The title fight aside and the hype around this fight, after UFC 300, there were a lot of, you know, journalists and fans, they, kind of circled this fight as their most anticipated fight for the rest of the year, right after UFC 300. You guys weren't even booked yet, so do you kind of take that as a, like a, like do you take pride in that, that even though the fight wasn't booked, like people were like, John Jones is still hadn't fought yet, and you know, Pereira hadn't done his thing yet, but people were still circling this fight as like the one that they wanted to see. For sure, for sure, man. When you, when you, your name is put up against guys like Alex Pereira and John Jones and, People, you know, and, and these guys are still fighting. There was fighting this year, you know, there, there was gonna have fights this year. And when you put those names against our names and they said, this is the fight that everybody wants to watch. I mean, that's pretty amazing, you know. At the end of the day, I'm just stoked to be, uh, to be talked about in that, in that sense. 
And when Alex did his, Alex Volkanovsky did his breakdown of this fight, he said that he's not sure that Elliot can like fight through being uncomfortable with you. You kept using that word, like if it gets in the later rounds, Max can make this uncomfortable. Is that how you see the fight playing out? Like in the later rounds, you can kind of just kind of take him out of his element and make this fight uncomfortable? Yeah, I mean, we we'll see what happens, you know. You never know, you never know what can happen. Your boy been uh, touching people on the right spot and been putting them down, so, you know, that, that, that's always fun. And uh, at the end of the day, we see what happens, you know. I know he talked about his cardio. He's, he believes he has cardio, but most of the time, his cardio is outshining the, the opponent's cardio because he's hurting them early in their fights, you know. And um, the beautiful thing is, guys, I, would, I just cannot wait, man. I can't wait. It's going to be something special. Tune in uh, Saturday night. Yep. You, you have like 15 five round fights right now, and Ilya in, in overall have 15 fights in Korea. Uh, what this experience means for your first in, in this fight against Ilya and in MMA overall? I mean, experience is cool, you know, but um, experience can all get taken away with one shot, you know, and Ilya has that one shot. I've been working on my one shot, so experience is experience. It is what it is. This is a world title fight. Uh, he won the fights that he's supposed to win to be here. I won the fights that I'm supposed to win to be here, and we got a fight, so that's, that's all there is. But, uh, winning Saturday night automatically gets you a lightweight uh, shot against Islam. Does it excite you knowing it replaces the long anticipated matchup that never happened against Khabib? I mean, unless you work in the UFC, and I don't know nothing, because I never ever heard of that, but uh, that'd be amazing, amazing news to me if, if, the, <laughs> if I got my hand raised and that was the direct shot, but for sure, like I said, man, uh, that I, I, I was talking about it all week, you know, we, we missed a shot with the Khabib fight, they call Islam the 2.0, and uh, I think Islam is like, He's more uh, willing to fight me now. I know he. I know he didn't care too much because why would he? You know, I was a 45er coming up and the 55 and and so and so whatever. But now he seems more openly to the fight. So I mean, never say never. You know, first things first. Like I said, though, I got Elio. I, he's my full focus. Well, you're closer than ever to being a triple champ. So good luck. Thank you. How would you want to be remembered as a fighter? Um. Actually, I, not even as a fighter, I just want to be remembered one of uh, the greatest people. Just a great person, that's it. No fighting, no fighting anything. I just want you guys to know me and people, all the UFC staff, just to know me as a great person. Like, oh, when they talk about myself, it's like, oh yeah, that was a great kid, or that was a great guy. And that's about it, you know, that you only can, uh, you only can leave great stuff behind, you know, and with all these records and everything is cool, but your personality and how you treat someone else is much more important to me. So if you guys can be like, oh yeah, Max is a great guy. Anytime I interview him, anytime I talk to him, any interaction I had with him was great. That's, that's, that, that's more than enough for me. Uh, you spoke a little bit about the, uh, the BMF belt. And let's be honest, you've given that belt real lineage now, especially with the performance that you put in against Gaethje. Another person who is pretty BMF in my opinion, Dan Ige, taking Lopez on four hours. What do you think of the idea of a Hawaiian v Hawaiian BMF? <laughs> that'd, be a, that'd be amazing, right? Two wines at the, top of, uh, at the top of it, the pinnacle, two warriors. I mean, it'd be cool. It'd be in cool. Hawaii? In Hawaii, that's probably not gonna happen. That's the, that's something that you that uh, it's not a UFC problem with Hawaii guys. It's it's a Hawaii problem. I don't know what's going down in Hawaii. I don't know why they give us so much hard times when I when I had the belt and we had opportunities to do it, but it's an Hawaii thing, bro. It's a Hawaii thing. But next big thing would be probably in Vegas. So. But with that, two Hawaiian fight for BMF belt, I couldn't see something more fitting. That'd be funny. Best of luck, champ. Thank you. Thank you.